Hello, welcome everyone. If you're seeing me, then you have arrived at Lancaster University's online open day. Welcome, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, things are really weird right now, and normally we'd be welcoming you to our beautiful campus today. Um, but right now we're just thrilled to be joining with you online and that we hope you're safe as well. So the first thing to do today is to familiarise familiarize yourself with our Open Day website. So head over to lancaster.ac.uk slash open, online open day. Um, and there you'll need to check in. That's the first thing we need you to do is check in. So other stuff on there, you'll be able to take a look at our exclusive content that we've got ready for you. Find all of the department live sessions get chatting to us over Unibuddy channels. Lancaster people love a chat notoriously, so come and say hello, we'd love that. Um, check out our Instagram stories where Ty and Tom will be showing you around campus today. Um, we've got a student panel coming up here, uh, so you can get your questions in the chat, in the Teams chat just over there or down there. Um, so for now, I'm gonna hand over to our Pro Vice Chancellor for Engagement, Professor Sue Black, who is gonna tell us all about why she loves Lancaster. Sue, are you either? Sue, you're on mute. There we go, is that better? Yay. Rookie error, get it out of the way, first thing in the morning. How are you, my darling? So well, thanks, Sue, I'm having a great day. Good, it's lovely to see you and thanks very much indeed. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd love to say welcome to Lancaster, but of course you're not in Lancaster and neither am I. I'm about 300 miles north of Lancaster, so I'm having a bit of withdrawal symptoms in terms of our beautiful campus. I was delighted to be back down there just a couple of weeks ago and I'm heading back down again next week because there's some important things that are going on. There's always things going on on the Lancaster campus. My job would normally be to stand up in front of everyone in our great hall and to be able to tell you about where Lancaster University sits in terms of its community and what our campus looks like. So I'm going to try and do the best that I possibly can uh, on this digital medium and at a distance. But one of the most important things that I want to do, first of all, is I want to dispel this ridiculous myth that Lancaster is somewhere in the north. So someone can move the next slide for me. What well, we're, we're not in the north. If you look at the geographic epicenter of the UK is Lancaster. And to be precise, it's actually about five miles away in Morecambe. So when you look at the extent of the UK, Morecambe is the heartland and the middle of the entirety of the UK. So I don't accept that we're in the north. I'm 300 miles north of it. Trust me, there's a heck of a lot of north that sits above Lancaster. There's some other important really th uh, things on this slide as well, because not only is Lancaster the geographic centre of the UK, it's also the sovereign centre of the UK. And what I mean by that is Lancaster, we have something that is called the Duchy of Lancaster and the Duke of Lancaster is Her Majesty the Queen. And so when you go back into our history and go back into the War of the Roses, and trust me, I'm going to come back to the War of the Roses a little bit later, there were two coloured roses. There was the red one that won and there was the other one that we don't talk about that didn't win but we'll come back to that a little bit later as well. So there's a real historical importance and a geographical importance that sits within Lancaster. And it makes certain that this area is particularly well connected. So it's easy to get to Lancaster. Now, if you go to the top of our, our crest there, 
And I think it's always important to try and understand what an institution is trying to convey in its own logo. That crest for Lancaster University is really important. Up there is the lion rampant. That's the first thing up the top. And that is our link to Her Majesty the Queen. And the Queen is the university's visitor. So in Lancaster and in Lancashire, we have the ability to have a different toast to everybody else. Everybody else will toast Her Majesty the Queen. We toast Her Majesty the Duke of Lancaster because she is in fact the Duke of Lancaster. Down below that, you see the two red roses and that's the red roses of Lancashire. Again, that's important historically. And the wavy line below that is the Loon. And the Loon is a really important river. And certainly in our past, it was an extremely important river for goods coming into the country, but also for transporting things out of the country. And down at the bottom is a book. And that open book is about open learning and open learning for everybody. But also hidden in there is the red and is the grey. And the red is about, again, the red rose of Lancashire, but the grey is about the university's Quaker roots. And our Quaker roots are about community, sustainability, being not profligate. It's a really important grounding, I think, for the university to be, to be able to remember what our roots are. So if we go on to the next slide, what this does is this shows you Lancaster itself. It is a city, but it's a very small city. But if you go back into history, it was recorded in the books in 1086. So we've got over 900 years of history behind us. You can see to the right hand side on, on the sort of horizon there, our castle. And the castle is a medieval castle, hugely important in terms of the legal systems in the UK of its time, but also it was a prison until relatively recently. What we've done since is it's now opened up, it's been amazingly transformed as a tourist uh, attraction, a beautiful castle, and the university has taken over some space in that castle. So where better to learn law or to learn um, medieval history than to sit actually within the physical space in which those events occurred. I think that's, that's the most amazing thing. Lancaster is a small city. There's only about 52,000 people in the city itself. So that means it's very welcoming and it's very easy to get around the city. It's got a lot of old quaint architecture, but it's also got some really new, vibrant and exciting architecture. And if our government is to believe, let's not get into that. But if it is, then the whole levelling up agenda, that whole agenda of focusing on region and place, places Lancaster right at the heart of where regeneration should happen. And we're seeing already a tremendous amount of regeneration in the area. And I'll come back to that in just a moment anyway. But you can walk around the city and many, many students choose to live in the city. It's about two and a half miles from the city to the campus. It can either be done by bike, there's some great bike trails, but there's also good public transport. But as you can see from this vantage point here, it only takes us a few minutes to get out to either the coast or to get up into Cumbria, into the Lake Districts or into any of the beautiful areas of scientific interest that sit around Lancaster. So in many ways, what we are the most wonderfully kept secret. And the trouble is once you get there, what Lancaster does is it takes your heart and it owns it. So that a lot of people who come to Lancaster choose never to leave it because it really is an incredible place. And I've only been there two years, but I have to say I'm already sold. And I think there is something very, very special about the people who come to Lancaster and the people who stay in Lancaster. They have the classic northern feet on the ground, but their head is in the, crowd, in the clouds because we have huge ambition. If we look to our next slide, this tells you something that's on our horizon, literally. As we looked at that last slide, you could see the, the coast. And we have the Eden Project coming, we hope, to Morecambe. So I say hope because it does depend on the government providing us a bit of funding. But you know, if nothing else, people from Lancaster know how to fight. So if you've been to Cornwall and you've seen the Eden Project down there, then the next Eden Project within the UK will be at Morecambe and in partnership with the university. So these utterly inspired mussel shells that are sitting on the beautiful Morecambe Bay will be an iconic image that will go around the world. So when we had the people from Eden up to, to look at the site, they took a photograph of a sunset on Morecambe Bay. And if you have a bucket list, 
make Morecambe Bay on your bucket list. He took the photograph and he put it out on Twitter and he said, where do you think I am in the world? And the tweets that were coming back were saying, you're in Rio de Janeiro, you're in the Canaries, you're in all these wonderfully exotic places around the world. Do you know, nobody said Morecambe, isn't that a surprise? But they will, and they will because this is an incredibly important development. It's not only an economic regeneration for the area, it's a social regeneration for the area as well. A huge tourist attraction that will bring in about a million visitors a year. And the little shell that's closest to you, that's the one that's going to be occupied by the university. That's where we will have our outreach, our engagement, our showcasing for research, our physical involvement in Eden, which will be looking at sustainability and environmental green development more than anything else. It's a hugely exciting project. Government just needs to get behind it. So let's hope that comprehensive spending review or whatever it is that's coming is going to look favourably on us because if it does, we're ready to go. If that's the case, we'll put a planning application in next year. We know the council will approve that. We'll start to break the ground next year. So if you come to Lancaster, and I really hope you do, the generation and the building of Eden at Morecambe is going to be in your time. The doors we hope will open maybe at the end of 23, but certainly by 24. And it will be the most amazing transformation that you can imagine for the area. If we move to the next slide, what you can see in the next slide is our Bale Rig campus. And it's about 200 acre campus that sits about two and a half miles outside the city. It is wonderfully rural. So it's a town or a little village all in its own right. The land was gifted to the university by the council back in 1963 when the university was founded. And what we were given was the tract of land to say, build a university and build a university that matters. And I know that every university that you go and listen to on an open day will tell you about their league tables. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. But what I want to try to convey to you is the heart that sits within Lancaster University, not the polish that we tend to put on it to try to persuade you to come here. Because I know that once you set foot onto the campus at Bale Rig, you won't want to go anywhere else. It was designed on a hilltop. It's the West Coast. It rains a little bit, only one day a year. Now that's a lie. It rains a little bit more than one day a year. But when we were building it, what we did was we created something that's called the spine. And the spine runs all the way down the south of the campus and all the way up the north of the campus. And it's covered because we know we need to get from one end to the other without getting soaking wet. So that when we were designing the campus, we had all sorts of things in mind. We needed a central location and there's Alexandra Square right in the middle. And we'll come to that in a few moments. But what there's also is that spine that allows you to go up and down through the, the, the campus itself. If you look at around the edges of the campus, you'll see that that's where all of our cars are. So it's a pedestrianised campus. You can walk around campus without having to worry about cars coming in and parkings to the periphery. And around every little corner, what we try to do is to create something that feels a little bit different. So all the spaces are different from each other. On the right there, about halfway down the campus, you can see a little building. It's a really odd looking building that has three circles. Oh, thank you very much. There's a, there's a cursor. Oh, that means I can test you now. So there's that three circles and that spire coming up and that's the university chaplaincy. And this was the first multi-faith chaplaincy in a university in the UK. It's for people of all faiths and for people of no faith, because it is the heart as well of the university. It's where we look after not just religious needs, but spiritual needs. And we all have that need for a spiritual heartland. And the chaplaincy is it's a weird building, a significantly weird building. I don't think we'd build it that way again, but, you know, it's unmistakable. So Alexandra Square, I'm now testing who's running the cursor, which I suspect is Josh. Josh, can you find us um, Alexandra Square? Uh, uh, up, 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 up. I feel like Bernie the Bolt. No. Uh, in there. Yeah, so Alexandra Square in there, right in the heart of the campus. The spine heading south. There we go. And the spine heading north. 
There we go. So that gives you some idea of the axis around which the campus is built. It is a village in its own right. So it's got its own radio, it's got its own theatre, its own shops, its own restaurants, its cafes, a pharmacy, banks, post offices, hairdressers, just about everything that you could imagine, bookshops. If you wanted to, you would never have to leave the campus. I do suggest you do, because if you didn't, you'd miss a tremendous amount. Probably one of the most important buildings on campus. And for those of you who are coming in not from the UK, you will not understand this. But for those who are in the UK, you will, is we have a Greg's Bakery. Now, Greg sits on campus. It is the most important building because we sit up on D floor of University House and we can look out onto Alexandra Square where Greg's is and we can judge just how busy things are because of the length of the queue trying to get into Greg's Bakery every single day. It is the second most profitable bakery for Greg's in the entirety of the UK. That's why we love Lancaster. We all know the benefits of a good sausage roll, quite frankly. Now, if you look just down the left hand side of, of the um, campus, there's a long line of trees that run down that side there. There's the M6. So it's really very, very close and you can hear a little bit of a thrum on occasion, but it just shows you how well placed we are and the fact that we're up on that hilltop. So I think it's a beautiful campus. I think it's a unique campus and it has such quirky traits. So you can walk literally all the way around the campus in a woodland walk. And the very fact that we are linked to the wildlife is really important. Oh, look, we've got a cursor that's heading all the way around the woodland walk. Take you, you know, about maybe three quarters of an hour on a day, which is a good stretch of the legs. The next slide will show you that if you are on that woodland campus, the kinds of things that you might see. And we have, can we go to the next slide, please? We have an obsession with our ducks. I don't know what it is. And if you're in any doubt, go onto YouTube, type in ducks, Lancaster University zebra crossing, and you will see a mother duck, and I think it's about 12 or 14 ducklings crossing the road on the zebra crossing. We even train them in health and safety. So it is a rural campus and we learn to live with the wildlife around us. So at certain times in the year, you might think that the university is looking a little bit scrappy because we haven't mowed the grass or we haven't cut down the reeds. There will be a very good reason why we haven't. We haven't cut down the reeds because the ducks are nesting or the moorhens have got nests and we don't want to disturb them. Or as we found just a couple of years ago, a quite rare orchid in the long grass outside the library. So we didn't cut the grass outside the library until that orchid had passed because we wanted to encourage the biodiversity that we would see on campus. We live with the wildlife and it's why we say to everyone, please don't feed them. It is about a natural habitat. And you'll find, you know, as you're sitting in the summer and the doors are open, the ducks have no qualms, absolutely no. They're so rude. They will wander into the buildings, they will wander into the library, and they are a part of the community. You'll see ducks, you'll see squirrels, hedgehogs. We even have a family of deer that if you're up early enough in the morning, and that might not be your thing, but if you are up in the, early enough in the morning, you'll see them down on the, the, the campus sports areas. So it's a special community for me, and that's, that's never more so than in our colleges, which we see in the next slide. And our colleges are in unique part to Lancaster. There are few universities in the UK that retain a collegiate system. And we decided that we would. We have nine colleges and everybody's assigned to a college. And you can choose, I believe, uh, your college as well. And they have different strengths. Some are very sporty, some are very music oriented. It just depends. But what this becomes is unquestionably your home from home. For some of us, we, we left university because we wanted to get away from home. For others, it was because we wanted to spread our wings safely and, and see what it was like to be an adult in a world where there was still uh, a safety net around you and your colleges provide that. Every student and every member of staff has a college. And even when I talk to alumni who haven't been at the university for 30 years, they still know which was their college and they keep tabs on how well their college is doing. So there's a real strength of belonging. 
you belong to your department, you belong to your college and you belong to the university and to the region in which it sits. And I think it's that sense of, of feeling of home and family that makes Lancaster particularly stand out. So whichever college it is, yours is, of course, the best college. Everybody knows yours is the best college. And in that college, you have your own bars. Of course, they're closed at the moment, but things will change. We have to be have the faith to live through it. There are your own restaurants, you have your own quizzes, you have your own sports events. And so all of those will go on in the colleges as well. We design our campus, the next slide, really very carefully to make sure that there are spaces that really suit everybody. This is Alexandra Square and the sun does shine in Lancaster. It shines a lot and you'll find folk will bring beanbags out of the library and sit and work outside. There's a set of Bonington steps along the side and a really big screen where people can sit and watch um, the sporting event I'm going to talk about in a moment going on. It really is, I think, uh, an incredibly ingenious space, both outside and the next slide shows us that we have ingenious space inside as well. We can go to the next slide. This shows us inside the library and the library space is really important. It's extending. It's really a heart on Alexandra Square and we cater to your needs in the way in which you learn. Some people need to learn in groups. Some people need to, to learn in isolation. Some people want to be in a pod and we literally create as many different environments as we can. And yes, in the background, that is a tree. So we have a live tree in the library and when the doors are open in summer, the ducks do love to come in and sit and nestle under the library. We've replaced our tree because unfortunately we lost our last one. So there's a new tree and if you go onto Twitter, there's still open the opportunity for you to help to name the tree. So it's really important. Our last one was Norman and I think at the moment the sort of lead name is Norma, but I might be wrong. Heaven knows it might turn out to be something ridiculous, but you know, it doesn't matter. The tree belongs to us and it's a really important part of bringing the outside in but also being able to take the inside out and I think that really categorizes what Lancaster is about. If you can go to the next slide please. This is just a beautiful slide, doesn't it show just how gorgeous our grounds are? And as you come up to the university, you see this rather odd looking curved building, that's the Ruskin. And this is about showing to you that what Lancaster does is it doesn't only worry about its own place. The Ruskin from John Ruskin, we were able to raise over eight million pounds to save the Ruskin collection for the nation. And he was the most amazing polymath whether you were looking at water, you were looking at environment, you were looking at alpine conditions, he really was an inspiration of his time. And there was a, a, a threat that the collection would be broken up. So we were able to raise the funds to save it for the nation. And the Ruskin collection is going online, which means that we're able to spread it across the world. So what Lancaster does from its hilltop is that it, it embeds itself within its local community, it takes responsibility for its national profile, but it also has a strong international profile, which we can see in the next slide. We have got partners in over 144 different countries. Lancaster was an area that sent its people, that exported its people. And so as a result, we feel very comfortable going around the world. We have partnerships with institutions in 24 different countries, and we also have four campuses overseas, one in China, one in Malaysia, one in Ghana, and a new one in Leipzig, which was Lancaster's Brexit strategy. So Lancaster was determined to stay in Europe, and we have a campus in Europe. And so being able then to connect these four campuses with the main mothership at Bailrig gives us this tremendous opportunity for you to be able to study anywhere across the world with any of our partners or with our different campuses. So we are international, we are national and we are local. I'm going to do the unthinkable and I'm going to put up the next slide, which I think is our, our league tables. And rankings are dreadful things because people only talk about them when they're good. They never talk about them when they're bad. And Lancaster has remained in the top 10 
for the last oh, decades or so. What's important is don't look at what that league table looks like this year. Look at it over the last 10 years. That tells you about something about where a university is going and where it's been, because it's easy to get into the top 10 and it's just as easy to fall out again, because it just depends what everybody else did that year. But it's the track record that's important. And Lancaster has been in that top 10 for over a decade. That isn't achieved lightly. That's a lot of hard work on behalf of all of the staff teaching and support and on behalf of the students. And that for me is the only thing that I really want to say about rankings. We're proud of it. It's not there to boast about, but it's proud to show that we know what we have to do to work hard to stay there. We are the top university in the North West. And in fact, we're now the top university in the North. Although, as you know, I don't think we're in the North. I think we're in the centre of the UK. There is one legal lead table, though, which is the next slide, which I really do want to boast about because it's the one that should affect you the most. So the next slide shows you where we sit in relation to graduate employment. We are the third in the UK for our graduates either going on to further education or going on into graduate level employment. Now that graduate level is important. That's telling you something about the salary scale that is not going into low paid jobs, that is going into graduate jobs. We spend a tremendous amount of our time making sure that the teaching that you get is going to get you into the job that you want to get to at the end. Otherwise, you have to ask, what's the point of a university? If you're going to university, it's to get a job, it's to make your life better, it's to fulfil your ambitions. We want to help you do that. And our alumni are extremely important because the one thing that you need to know is if you've been to Lancaster, you stay with us forever. So our alumni, you remain with the university for the rest of your days. We will make sure that we stay in touch with you and we are there for you. So wrapping up now fairly quickly, on to the next slide. The university is predicated on three particular pillars. Now, I would love this to be representative of what our face-to-face -face teaching looks like at the moment. It doesn't, of course it doesn't, but we will get back there. And that's what our focus is on. Our teaching, sometimes small groups, sometimes larger groups very interactive with teachers who really are committed to learning. We are TEF gold, which is important. The next slide shows what our research laboratories would normally look like. I know they don't look like that now. They are safely distanced. And if you're going into a research lab, we have taken the security and the social distancing really seriously. Our research is top level. So we're about to submit into our research excellence framework. And the last time we submitted, it was clear that a significant percentage of the research that goes on at Lancaster is world leading, not nationally leading, but world leading. So research, teaching, and then our third pillar for the university is engagement, which is my bailiwick. And engagement is just the way in which we partner with all of those institutions who want to work with us. We have the most amazing group, and I put this up simply because I couldn't believe that our group in and our, our um, environment centre persuaded me to send their team to Glastonbury because they have a thing that's called sex, bugs and rock and roll. So getting science out into Glastonbury, isn't that an amazing idea? When you look at our, our facilities, the next slide, whatever your, your particular ambition is, whether you want to be a dancer, whether you want to be in music, whether you want to be in a political group, the societies that we have, you know, so many of those, we give you the opportunity to try out different things, to find the things that are right for you and the things that aren't. So our facilities are amazing. And the next slide, will show you something that we are very proud of. We have an eco hub on the grounds of the university where we grow our own produce. We have our own rescue chickens, of course we do, and we also have beehives. So that the produce that is produced in the eco hub, and you can be a part of that if you wish, is sold in Alexandra Square so that the food has got no carbon travel whatsoever to get from our eco hub to you in Alexandra Square. 
One of the things we believe in very firmly is the cyclical approach to our ecology. We also have a, a wind turbine that sits on the hill, and I know that people have mixed views about wind turbines, but the wind turbine that we create, heaven knows Lancaster is windy, so it is a resource to be used. We actually, the, the electricity we sell into the grid, all of the return from that goes into community funded projects. So the university doesn't benefit out of it, our community does. So there's great opportunities for you to get involved in any form of green activities if that's your particular thing. The next slide, coming towards the end of what I'm saying, I want to talk to you about that War of the Roses that we were talking about just right at the outset, where we had the Red Rose of Lancaster, which you can see is in the front there, and the White Rose of York, which as you can see is the, the gentleman who's slightly further behind. There's no competitiveness in this War of the Roses at all. It is competitive, but it's really good natured. And every year what we have are what we call roses. And roses is a sporting event that literally everybody becomes involved in, whether you are on the pitch or on the court or whether you are there to support. And it's Lancaster University and York University. And unfortunately, last year, and who knows what will happen this year, it had to be a virtual event where we raise money for charity. But when this is on the ground and functioning, it is something to behold. Everybody literally stops what they're doing and supports Roses. And it really is that community spirit. It's the largest student sporting event in Europe. And I think that's something to be credibly proud of. And the next slide shows that we don't actually take ourselves too seriously when it does come to roses. Of course, we want to win. What we want to win more than anything is when roses is away. So when that happens, when you are a student at Lancaster and you're training up for that roses that's going to be away in York, all of the pressure on bringing home that trophy is on you. It's a whistle stop tour um, through Lancaster University and through our campus. I can't do it any justice, but I hope that what I've given you is a little bit of enthusiasm that says this is a campus you really need to set your foot on to get any idea of what is the size of its heart. Kat, I know that you've got a fantastic day set aside for everyone. I wish I could be there with you and I hope everyone, you know, don't go away with any questions unanswered. It doesn't matter what your question is. These wonderful people are here to help you with all of the answers. And, you know, if we don't have the answer, we'll find it for you. Kat, oh, it's over to you. Thank you, Sue. That was lovely. I love that. I love watching you deliver that session. It's so so nice to hear people talk about campus again. I think I really miss campus, actually. Um, more than I thought I would. I think the thing I miss most about campus is obviously the Greggs, but also just the green space. I know Sue touched on it a little bit, um, but just being able to kind of live and work in such a beautiful surrounding really has a massive impact on, on well-being and people's mental health. And that's something we hear a lot from our students. So um, thanks, Sue. Um, so coming up in a little bit, we've got um, a student panel. We've got a couple of students who are going to be taking your questions. So in the chat, wherever that is on the screen, um, get asking your questions about anything to do with student life or Lancaster life. Um, and we will happily discuss some of those answers for you. Um, what else have we got going on? So if you head over to our website, you can catch some of the other live sessions that are happening today. So you can get sessions on all of your courses, all of your subjects, um, but also things like careers, things like the library. Um, there's lots and lots of content over on there. You can also have a look at some of our student ambassador content on things like studying a placement, giving you a tour of our accommodation. There's just so much information on there. So really get on that um, online open day web page and have a deep dive around some information. We really recommend that you do do that. Um, also, we've got our students over on Instagram stories. Ty and Tom are about to deliver a online tour for you. So I think they're going to show you around some of the campuses hotspots so that you can see what campus is all about. And they're obviously doing that in a in a safe and secure way at the moment. Um, so yeah, join them over on Instagram stories. I think they're kicking off at 11 o'clock for that campus tour. Um, so I think we're ready for the panel. We have got with us three students today um, from joining us from their either their bedrooms or their offices or wherever they are. Uh, we have Billy and Beatrice and Dan, I believe, who are joining us from all over the world, all over the country. 
so what I'm going to do to introduce you guys is if you could go around and just tell people a little bit about yourself. So your name, your college and what you study, that would be great. Dan, we'll start with you. So yeah, um, my name's Dan. I study criminology. I'm in obviously the best college on campus. Well, I'm kind of in two colleges at the moment, but that's a bit complicated. So my, my undergraduate college was filed. Um, so we have a great bar, you know, it's nice and central. I, you know, it wasn't the college I picked, but when I got there, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Brilliant. And Billy? Hi, uh, I'm Billy. I'm a third year math student um, and I'm in Pendle, which if you ask me is definitely the best college. <laughs> I'm Beatrice. Hello, I'm Beatrice. Uh, I'm a Portuguese student studying in Lancaster. I'm now in my third year and I study politics, international relations, and my college is Boland and obviously I love it. <laughs> I totally agree with you there, Beatrice. I'm I'm a staff member and I'm Boland, so bow until I die, guys. <laughs> Great. So um, what we'll do then is we'll get kicked off with some questions. So I can see one question that um, Asha has just asked, asking if we ever get cabin fever being on a campus. Um, is it easy to get shopping and travel to other places, etc.? So obviously things might be a bit different at the moment, but your experiences on campus when perhaps when things were more open, um, I would love to hear about that. Um, Billy, do you want to, to start us off? Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that campus has everything that you need. It's great. Um, it means, you know, if you don't want to leave, you don't have to, like Sue said earlier. Um, but the buses into town are extremely frequent and are very reasonably priced as well, um, which means it's really easy to pop out into town um, or a bit further to sort of Blackpool, Preston or the lakes or whatever. Um, so, you know, I think there's, you've got the best of both worlds being on campus and I never felt like I was restricted or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's a really good shout and kind of the, the travel to other places is so easy. I know um, Sue mentioned us being really near the M6. Obviously, that means that we're really close to the one of the biggest motorways in the country. We're also on like a main train route so people can travel. Um, Billy, like I know you're from London, aren't you? So you can yeah. kind of travel fairly easily to, to London and Manchester and Liverpool, that kind of thing. Um, OK, so um, we'll jump into another question. So there's a couple of questions about societies. So I think it'd be great to talk about the societies that you guys are in. Um, Dan, I know that you are in the athletic society, right? I am. Uh, I can't Thanks. promise how much athletics I actually do, but I'm in the running an athletics club. Um, so yeah, societies on campus is obviously a really important part of your student experience. Um, so I definitely recommend joining like anything you're interested in giving it a go at the moment obviously like everything else our societies are working slightly differently um especially under the new tier three regulations that have just come in but where we can um we're trying to do lots of activities and events even if they're online um rather than in person um but yeah I, um running athletics club has, has been a really important um part of my time at, uh, at Lancaster as Sue mentioned you know things like Rosie's especially bring those sort of clubs together and you know it is a really important part of your experience as a student. Definitely and so um, as well as lots of sports societies there are loads of other societies to meet everyone's needs. Um, Beatrice do you want to tell us a bit about the societies that you're part of? Uh, this year and last year as well I'm a part of the Execo of UNICEF this is not a sports society, obviously, but like it's a, it's a charity society. And uh, I love being a part of it because basically what UNICEF does is during the entire year raises fundraises money and then we send like to the UNICEF itself. Obviously during COVID we are not able to um, do almost any of the events we usually do during the year, but like especially on first term, we are trying to engage people by online events, by quizzes, by there are so many things we can do online to engage people's attention. So and being a part of the society is something amazing. We have a lot of free time because we don't have that much classes or that many seminars in terms of weekly hours. So I think being in a society is not only amazing for your CV, but also something really useful to do with your um, free time. And we feel better when we leave uni because we feel like we had it we had a complete experience. Yeah, definitely. I think that's absolutely right. It really, I think societies really help kind of tick those boxes of like a social thing, something a little bit to, to fulfill yourself, but also really good for your CV and things like that, like you, you mentioned. Um, there's a couple of questions about music and theatre. Now, Billy, I think that you're in the, you're in the music society, right? Yeah. 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 So do you want to tell us a little bit about opportunities for, for music and um, kind of the arts in, at Lancaster? 
Yeah, so I'm in the Music Society, so I'm in choir. Um, and, you know, even this year they're running online rehearsals and things like that, which is great. Um, and they actually did um, an online summer showcase at the end of last term. So, you know, even though things are running a little bit differently, they are still running. In terms of sort of like theatre as well, there's also a theatre um, society on campus as well as dance society. Um, and all of those once a year will come together um, to perform a show. Um, so last year was well they were going to do Chicago and the year before that was Hairspray so there's opportunities to not only focus on you know the one discipline that you really like but also to collaborate with other societies as well which is really nice. Yeah that's a really good shout um, and so we're getting a couple of questions about the different types of colleges and um, someone's got a really nice question about filed college for you Dan so um, Ryan says hi Dan I had a look at file college on the website is it a sporty college and what was your first impression when you walked in? So I think that that's, we'll start with you, Dan, but I'd love to hear that for the other colleges as well. So get your answers ready, guys. So away you go, Dan. Yeah, so the first thing I'd say is don't take to heart what you hear about the colleges necessarily. They're all really welcoming um, for anyone, no matter what your interest is. So I know I'm in the running athletics club, but little secret, I'm not actually that sporty. Um, so, and filed, you know, it, it, it's not, the sports college. Sports is just part of the, the community and the things it offers. It's the same with all the colleges. They might have their little quirks or interests, but it, you know, if you don't if you don't like sports and end up in file, that's not an issue at all. You know, you'll still love it, you'll still feel welcome. All that support is available still. Um, so when I first came to Filed, the first thing I thought really was how welcoming it was really. So how good the community was, how friendly everyone was. And I think as much as I hate to admit it, you get that experience across all the colleges in that they're all really welcoming. They're all lovely um, and they're all open to everyone. So yeah, don't worry too much about what you hear about the colleges. Just if you when you think about choosing, just try and think of um, I went sort of by gut and feel and that's fine too um, and whatever college you end up in um, hopefully you'll love it. Totally and worth saying as well Dan that you, if you're in Fylde College for example you can still use all the facilities at Boland or Pendle or wherever you can you know it really doesn't limit you in, in any way but Not really I'd love to hear your experience of um, oh, Pendle right? Yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah, so Pendle, I love it. Um, we're sort of known as the music college because we host um, regular Pendle Live. So it's sort of like an open mic night um, that we have in our college bar. Um, but I know many people that aren't musically inclined in that college. Um, I also know some of my best friends are the sportiest people in the world. Um, and obviously they're in Pendle as well. So I think it goes back to, you know, sort of what Dan was saying. You can be in whatever college, no matter what your interests. And you can go use, you know, any college bar. I hate to say it, Filed Bar is one of my favourite because they do some great food. So, you know, um, being part of your college, it's great. It's sort of that home within the bigger uh, university environment. And, you know, I've met some of my best friends there. But whatever college you end up in, you will absolutely love. So, you know, think about it and, you know, put some thought into it, but also don't worry about it. Yeah, totally. And, and Beatrice, how did you make the decision to be in the best college in, in Boland? Like I chose Boland mainly because of the location, because it's North Campus. I'm politics. I need a North Campus, but like I, I really enjoy Boland. Like I enjoy uh, Boland accommodation. I enjoy Boland's environment. I enjoy like the Boland bar that is also super close to Alex Square, for example. I think it's really great. But like as there we're both saying, obviously all the environments are good in every college. I think a good tip is to when we are thinking about the college, besides from the environment itself, because we can guarantee you that it's amazing in every college, you can have two things. You can, for example, uh, choose based on the location, depending when you where you have your classes. It's really important to see a college that is close because it's easier to walk five minutes instead of 15 in the morning. And the second thing I would say I was like, for example, go to Facebook or go to Instagram because every college has a web page. And based on that web page, you can see like what the college uh, publishes, the events they do, how they run the college, the exec of that college. And that can give you like a better taste of what is actually be in that college. I think that's a really, really good tip, Beatrice. Go and, go and get yourself on the, the college Instagrams. They're all really 
um, active on there. And so, yeah, go and, go and have a good look. And I think you made a really good shout about the accommodation as well. So people might not be aware, but when you choose your college, you're choosing your accommodation attached to that as well. Um, so uh, there's a couple of questions um, coming in about accommodation. So I wondered if um, you could give us a, a bit of um, information about what your on-campus accommodation was like, and then maybe I'll ask one of you, um, who maybe lives off campus or has lived off campus, what that's been like too. So Beatrice, we'll go the other, other way. You go first. Okay, so on my first year, I was in Bolton Halls. That basically, basically is like a an in suite accommodation. I had my own bathroom, I had my own bedroom, which was pretty big to be honest. I really enjoyed it, and I we had a kitchen, and we were four girls sharing that kitchen. I really liked the, that type of accommodation. I had enough privacy to have my own bathroom, which in my point of view was essential, and. We were four people sharing a kitchen, which means like it's a good number, it's not too many, it's not too little. So for me, that was ideal. After my first year, and also bowling and holes are so green, I love that. Like by the window, I could see trees, the grass. For me, that was amazing because for me, it's essential to have green spaces around me and feel like calm and see the birds and the ducks all the time, everything amazing. Oh, After I my first so nice. year, I wanted to have my, the experience of being outside of campus. So I came to leave to town. And I loved it too. Like, obviously, we are more far away from the library and campus itself. But when we come to, to the city, we are also closer to other things like bars, pubs, uh, mo the movies, uh, restaurants. So I think that to have a full university experience is essential to leave both places. And then on third year, you can like choose which one you prefer. But the truth is that the university cannot guarantee you uh, accommodation on campus after first year. But still, you can give it a try. I have some second and third year friends living on campus because they enjoy it the most there. So yeah, basically, as you can see, you have lots of um, chances. You have lots of different choices and you are free to choose any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, Billy, do you want to tell us a little bit about your accommodation experience, particularly on campus? Yeah, so in my first year, I lived in superior ensuite accommodation um, and Pendle's uh, superior ensuite is in southwest campus. So southwest campus is purely accommodation. So unlike main campus where you've got academic buildings and accommodation sort of mixed together, um, over there it's just accommodation. Um, and it's a sort of two minute walk away from main campus and it felt like I was going home at the end of the night. So, you know, some people love to live on top of Greg's, um, but I wanted to live somewhere that was a little bit further out. Um, but, you know, I still sort of felt like I was in the heart of campus and things like that. Um, and I chose on sweet purely because I thought oh, I just hate waiting for bathrooms and things like that. Um, but, you know, if I was to do it again, I potentially would go into standard um, because I've since learned that they are actually cleaned a lot more frequently than I ever cleaned my on suite. So, you know, there's pros and cons to both of them, really. Yeah, totally. Dan, I wonder, I know that you're um, on the JCR for filed. I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the standard accommodation. Um, so actually, funnily enough, I'm in one of the types of standard accommodation at the moment. It's still, this one's still on suite, but it's fairly similar to the ones that are standard. Um, it's all, you know, it's all really nice. Um, so I'm actually in one a room that's really similar to the standard accommodation at the moment. You know, I look out my window before I saw a squirrel. It's incredible what you can see just by looking out the window. Um, I think, yeah, I think all the accommodation across Lancaster has, uh, Lancaster University has won awards in the previous years. It's all really, really well maintained, really well looked after. If you have any problems at all, you can just, in fact, there's an app for it now. So you just go on the iLancaster app, uh, put in your problem and someone comes and fixes it. It's it's absolutely incredible how, how good the accommodation is, um, no matter what type you go for really. Um, so yeah, I think, I, was, it, was it Billy who was saying about the accommodation and uh, the link between accommodation and colleges um, in that, you have to choose, you know, you choose your college and certain types of accommodation are available in each college. I think if you you look, if you're not sure where to start when it comes to colleges, I think looking for accommodation and looking at accommodation is a great start. So yeah, head to the website, check out the uh, 3D tour things we've got going on and hopefully you'll get a better idea of our accommodation. Yeah, great. Good, good one, Dan. Um, I think that, that re leads really nicely actually on to um, the next question, which um, Billy sort of touched on a little bit about work-life balance and like how you manage, you were saying really like you like to go home at the end of your uh, your lectures. Um, so there's a question here that says, 
Um, roughly how much time consists of academic work? Do you feel like there's a good balance between work and relaxation? Um, so let's start with Dan, let's go with you. Um, so in terms of um, how much time consists of academic work, um, with university you're, you're lucky to get the, the um, flexibility option in that um, you know, a lot of it's down to you. Essentially, the, the balance, especially between work and relaxation, is down to you. And I'm, I'm, I can be terrible at it sometimes. So sometimes I'll be doing way too much uni work and not enough relaxation. And then it goes the other way because, as I'm sure you're beginning to see, the the Lanc uh, Lancaster University has tons of opportunities, whether that's within the college, whether that's you know with societies and so on, and whether that's you know part time work and things like that. There's so many opportunities. It's fairly easy to get distracted from your uni work, which is a great thing because it's so important to seize other opportunities within your degree but yeah I think but with getting a good balance between work and relaxation I think that's very much down to you and your planning and how how you are as a person really so yeah it's it's very much the ball is in your court I think definitely definitely and Billy how's that experience been for you yeah so as a math student um, I tend to have a lot more contact hours than sort of other um, non-STEM subjects would so my first year I think I had about 17 contact hours and um, which is obviously a lot less than people are used to at school um, but that sort of helped to give me a lot of structure which is what I like um, and then obviously on top of that you have a few hours of needing to actually do your homework and coursework and things like that um, but for me just sort of having societies and their set times of when they were helped me to schedule my day and sort of forced me to put down my work and go and enjoy myself at those societies so you know I think there's it's easy to get caught up in work but also there's so much going on that you know there is you can go distract yourself with those other things. Definitely and uh, Beatrice how was that experience for you of, of work-life balance? Uh, I think everything can be really balanced I think it's all about organizing ourselves and remembering that like uni is not just about academic work and it's also about socializing society sports and that's like essential so I, in terms of contact hours in my degree we don't have that many so i think it's really important to uh, go to the classes to do independent study i would say almost every day because we have a, i have a lot to read i have a lot to do i have a lot to study but at the same time it's as i said essential to go to societies, to play sports, to distract ourselves, and really important as well to socialize. So I think it's all about being organized and defining goals, because otherwise the time goes. <laughs> Definitely, and I think well, that's a really good there. point. <laughs> yeah, it's important to, I think everyone struggles with that, even past university, I certainly do. It's, it's, uh, it's great to have organization and, and plan your time out like that. Exactly. Um, OK, I think we've got one last question that I can ask. Let me have a quick look. Um, OK, so there's a couple of people asking about people's experience during COVID. So I wondered if you could tell me a little bit about how you've been adapting to work um, in these unprecedented times. Uh, Billy, do you want to take that one for us? Um, yeah, so obviously like work wise um, it's all moved online um, but in my department the lecturers and things like that um, have still made themselves available so their office hours um, so basically I can still go ask them for help if I need it yes it's online but we're all adapting and you know I still feel like I'm getting the help and the tuition that I deserve really. Mm -hmm. And Dan you're obviously on campus at the moment um, How well how's that? Yeah, it's it's really good. So the uni's put in a lot of effort to make sure everyone's as safe as possible. So, you know, we've got things like one way systems, hand sanitizer available, uh, the the leg uh, the the regulations around masks are the same as in uh, the rest of the UK. You know, they, they really have gone the extra mile to make sure everyone's as safe as possible on campus. And I, I really do sort of echo Billy when when she, she was talking about asking for help. Um, I think the most important thing you can do in what is a strange and can be really difficult time is is ask for help we've got the support there um across campus whether it's college support academic support and so on just yeah just speak to us and and ask if you need anything absolutely and and Beatrice how's the experience been for you I think it's been quite good uh, a good thing is that there isn't any question that I have that the university doesn't have an answer what I mean by this like is new, there are new rules coming up there there are like changes on campus changes in teaching and I really feel that the university has everything like super well defined the new rules are really good implemented so there is no space for doubt no space for like anxiety or unnecessary stress 
when we have everything super clear and I think that's great. In terms of online classes, we save time in going to the university and coming back home. So I already see more time here, which is good. And I don't know, I think it's a different experience and when everything will be back to normal, hopefully. So let's just enjoy this different experience by now and take the maximum we can take out of it. Uh, I think that's a lovely attitude to have, Beatrice, and very philosophical, I think. Um, so that kind, of, uh, <laughs> yeah, that kind of wraps us up. So I just want to say thanks, Dan, Billy, Beatrice. You've been really lovely. Thank you so much for, for answering those questions for us. Uh, thank you so much to our panel and to Sue for, for answering all of those questions and talking really passionately about why we love Lancaster, which we do. Um, the day's not over yet. Head on over to our online open day webpage and you can find all of the other live chats that have been scheduled today, as well as a ton of other exclusive content about things like accommodation, placements, the gym, our eco hub. Go and have a real look on that webpage. There's so much information. Um, you can also talk to us over on the UniBuddy live channels. Um, we'll be there until four o'clock today for you to have a, have a chat to us. Um, you can also go over and join us on Instagram stories. Tom and Ty are doing a tour of the campus right now. So go and have a look at that. Um, and yeah, just keep keep chatting to us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really hope that you've enjoyed this session and uh, we hope that you are starting to love Lancaster as much as we do. OK, bye. <laughs>